lovies, this is Ro. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing something a little bit off topic. I don't know when I'm gonna post this. I don't know where I'm gonna post this, but you could see I'm in my jacket. I'm freezing. I am not feeling so well today. I actually made it to the parking lot of the gym. And then right before I was about to get out of the car, I decided it was a really bad idea to work out. There's the clock. I decided it was a really bad idea to work out. So instead I left, I went to go get some zinc. My chest is really tight. My dad probably has pneumonia, although he hasn't been to the doctor yet, but it's going around and he sounds horrible. We live together, I don't wanna get it. My chest is getting tight, so now I'm doing my natural remedies. What I'm doing right now, I always do during flu season and I completely have been dragging my feet, making it this year, but it's time. So we are going to make some elderberry syrup. Again, I apologize that I'm in my jacket, that my hair is crazy in a bun on top of my head. I expect it to be in the gym right now, but I'm not, so. The ingredients for what we are gonna do, did I even say what we're doing? <laughs> we're making organic homemade elderberry syrup, which is an amazing guard. It is all natural and it protects you from the flu and other viruses, especially it keeps your immune system up while it's flu season. I've used it in the past. I make batches for my sister who gives it to her kids. They have horrible immune systems. They don't eat well. They barely eat, honestly. They don't sleep well. So she uses it to protect them and it's really helped them not get sick as often as they usually do throughout the winter. So I'm gonna insert a picture of all the ingredients there. I'll show you one by one and then we will make it together. I'll also put links to everything in the description box below. So all you have to do is scroll down, look in that little description box and everything you need will be linked right there for you. So if you guys like these types of videos, if you want me to integrate more of my natural, that kind of stuff into also my prison videos and my prison life stuff, you guys let me know. Okay, we're getting hot. It's time to take off the jacket. We'll put on an apron. We're not even using the pretty floral one today. We're keeping it real. We're using the beat up Italian grandma pizza apron. It's about to go down, you guys. Elderberries naturally contain vitamins A, B, and C, and all three of those are really good at stimulating the immune system. Israeli researchers found that the complexes of whatever make up the elderberry, I know, I know, so medical, but they actually, the molecules in the elderberries themselves, help fight specifically against the cold and the flu virus. Dr. Madeline Mumku Oglu, oh, huh, I butchered it, found that the sugar enzymes within these elderberries do something to the tissue in your nose and your throat to the cells in there to arm your body against the cold and the flu virus. So if you take it as a preventative before you get the infection or the virus, it helps work as a preventative. If you already hit with the bug and you take it after you have the infection, 20% of subjects that were involved in this study who had already caught the virus said that within 24 hours, they started feeling a lot better. 70% of them said they started feeling significantly better within 48 hours. And 90% of them claimed a complete cure within three days, 72 hours. Ugh. Wow. In contrast, subjects receiving the placebo said that it took them six full days to recover. I'm, I'm just blown away. So in this recipe, we're going to use those guard dog berries, the elderberries, and we're gonna use it with other immune boosting supplements and natural stuff to give you a one-two punch to help prevent the disease or if you're like me and you feel like you're coming down with it to help shorten it. So you're using things like cinnamon and clove and raw natural honey and ginger to really pack a punch of immune boosting supplement into this syrup. If you don't use honey or if you're fully vegan or if you don't want the extra sugar, there are also supplements for it. I'm on the fence and on if I want the sugars in the honey only because I'm following a very, very strict eating plan right now. But honestly, I'd rather get a little bit of natural sugar versus the flu. So we'll see when we make this what I decide to do. It does call for, I think about a half a cup of honey. So just keep that in mind if you wanna use that or an alternative. And you can also fully customize this recipe based off of your own personal health needs or your taste preferences. And if for some reason dried elderberries are not available for you, sometimes during cold and flu season, they sell out all over the place. There are some 
really good supplements that you can find in the drugstore or vitamin shops or natural food stores. My only warning against that is a lot of them are jam packed with tons of table sugar, which can kind of work against you because there have been studies that show that after consuming sugar, your immune system is decreased, goes down tremendously, I can't remember the exact percentage, but way more than 50%, a lot, maybe 70 or 80% for at least four hours after consuming it. But to me, that's a catch 22. It's kind of counterproductive, but that's up to you. Let's get to the recipe. The prep time is gonna be about five minutes. It's literally just getting everything out of your fridge and your cabinets. The cook time is going to be one hour because you need to let the berries boil and simmer and get all of their, and get all of those enzymes out of them. The total time for this recipe will be about an hour and five to an hour and 20 minutes, depending on how long it takes you to mash the berries and get that all, all of the liquid poured into whatever jars you're going to be keeping it in. Let's get to the fun part, your ingredients. We need three and a half cups of water. We need two and a half cups of elderberries. I got the Star Botanical, Star West, Botanicals brand, they're about $22 on Amazon, and I got them on Prime, they were here within two days. These are the dried elderberries, or well, you can get fresh elderberries, it's really hard to get them this time of year. These are dried. They smell really berry, they smell very good, but I wanna give you a warning. When you cook the berries, it creates an odd smell in the house that's like berry with a mix of dirty feet, if I'm being 100% real. But they look like this. They're just little, small little dried berries. It's a teeny tiny little dried berry. And I've actually put them in tea, just used a teaspoon in a cup of hot water, give it about 10 minutes to simmer, and they taste really good. I actually eat the berries, they're really, really good. It also calls for two tablespoons of fresh ginger grated, that's optional. Today, and I have that in the fridge, but today I wanna try it with Ginger that's already dried and grated from the store. I just wanna see if it makes it last longer because the elderberry syrup lasts about two, max three weeks in your fridge and I've had it before and I've had it go bad and it tastes awful. It kind of starts to ferment. So what you could do is this makes a really big batch. And if you're only taking a tablespoon to two tablespoons a day, then you're gonna have too much. You're not gonna go through it that fast if it's just for you or just for you and the kids. So you could freeze it and defrost it as needed. You could freeze it in little Chinese soup containers or little mason jars. But I just wanna see if this will make it last longer. And this is the Simply Balanced Organic Ground Ginger. And it was probably around $5 from the grocery store. The next thing you're gonna need is one tablespoon of ground cinnamon. My favorite brand is I take the labels off and I put them in these Chinese soup containers because it's just easier. It usually comes kind of in a bag like this that when you keep sticking your hand in there, it just gets cinnamon dust all over you. It's easier to store in these containers. It doesn't leak. So that's why it looks like that. But that is the front. That's probably not gonna focus because I have this set to focus on my face. <laughs> uh, so that's from Amazon, about 20 something dollars as well. No, I don't think it's any more than $25 for a decent sized bag and it's really strong. To me, this is much stronger than just regular cinnamon you get in the store. That would work perfectly. I just like the taste of this one better and it is all natural organic red ape cinnamon again. Did I say this is one teaspoon that you're gonna need of this? Then you're going to need a half a teaspoon of ground cloves. This is just a cheapo that I got at the farmer's market. It's Mimi's products. If I had to do this again, I would probably get it from Whole Foods or the organic section in Stop and Shop just because if you are doing this to prevent illness and disease, you might want to go to take a step above so you don't get those fertilizers and all that stuff. But do what you can. Meet yourself where it works for you. So if you have to get all of your spices out of the dollar store, to me it's better than nothing. The last thing we're gonna use is a half a cup of raw honey. I got this at my local grocery store. I also might mix it though with Manuka honey because this is really, really good for cold and flu. This is really expensive. It's from Costco and I think it was 40 something dollars. Not cheap. There's 32 ounces, this is two pounds. Got this, God, a year or two ago. It's so good, it's, it's like buttery. I don't know if you can see how much is left in there, but it's to still like to about here. It's a little less than half. This is just as good and I wanna say this would maybe is like between five and $10 at the regular grocery store. Honey is 
a natural antibiotic, an antihistamine. So it's really good for you to have this. But if you can't have sugar, if you're diabetic, or if you have an adversity to eating sugar in your diet, I get you, girl. I understand you. You can use, let's see if I have it in here. Yeah, I have the Frontier brand green stevia it's stevia powder same bag as that but i put it in here just like the cinnamon i put it in there just to make it easier to scoop out of there and to store that is literally just the stevia plant i use it to sweeten things but i don't like stevia drops and i don't like the white stevia powder because those are still processed this is just the ground up leaf it is, takes a little bit of getting used to. It's sweet, but it's also very bitter and it has an earthy plant flavor. I think once you get used to it, it's fine. I can't use too much of it or it's it's got a kick. I'm telling you, it's got a bite to it, but it definitely works and it's good for you. It's better for you. So I think I'm gonna use honey in mine this time, but in the future, I'll try it with the green stevia and I'll let you know. Any kind of sugar alternative that you want to use for yourself is fine if you think about it you're using a half a cup and that usually makes me three batches into the freezer so you're only getting a little amount in one to two tablespoons a day if you want to use this as a preventative against getting sick just a tablespoon in the morning is fine if you feel like you're coming down with something if there's a way that you could take a tablespoon every two hours throughout the whole entire day every day while you feel like you're getting sick or every day while you're sick until it passes, that will help you tremendously. So one tablespoon a day, max two a day, one in the morning, one at night if you want, during cold and flu season, or if somebody in your house has the flu, if you've been exposed to the flu, if you're coming down with the flu or a cold or a bug, then I would take it every hour to every two hours, just a tablespoon, just take it throughout the day. You can't take too much of it, it's natural. You're supposed to put everything in here except the honey, bring it to a boil, let it simmer for an hour, and then when it's hot, you add the honey in at the end because you don't want to destroy the live enzymes in the honey. Your girl forgot that part and she added the honey, so I'm gonna have to add more honey at the end, but that's okay. It is what it is. Okay, so it's been in not only an hour since this simmered on the stove on low heat, but also, you're supposed to take it off the heat and let it cool for a while. And it just so happened when that finished, I was in the middle of a live video. And you guys know, this is not your first video here. You'll learn very quickly when I'm on a live video, we stay on for at least an hour usually. So that had plenty of time to cool. What's gonna happen is when that sit boils, it's going to reduce the water by at least half. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take something to crush it. I just used the back of a metal spoon and you're just gonna crush the berries against the side of the pot. So you're just taking the spoon and you're trying to crush as much juice as you can out of the berries. I mess this one up because that's why you don't film and do things at the same time because you get distracted, but live and learn. So what you're supposed to do now is add the honey. You're not supposed to add the honey in beforehand or you're gonna get this thick goop. You don't wanna cook it for that long because you wanna keep the enzymes. So it is what it is. I did it wrong, we'll survive. But what you're gonna do now, which is gonna be, yours is gonna be a little bit more juicy. Mine is just, I added the honey. So it's a thick consistency. So I might have to add more water. But once you smash these berries really good against the pan, you're gonna strain it through a strainer and discard the berries and keep the juice. Do you say discard, discard? Why do I pronounce words weird? I'm just gonna strain this. And then you're gonna mash the juice out of that. I threw out the old elderberries. A lot of people save this in mason jars. I think it's a little bit easier. I saved my old kombucha bottles. This is just an empty washed out kombucha bottle. I just use this little strainer I got at the dollar store and it makes it easier for me to put this in the fridge and use it every single day. It almost fit perfectly. And then you have your elderberry juice. When this cools off, I'll put this in the fridge. I'll shake it every morning, take a tablespoon, and this will keep you good and healthy. I love you guys. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of your hearts. I will see you beautiful 
and healthy, ladies and gentlemen, in the next one. Bye, guys. Receiving the police, placebo. Placebo said perfectly by a prison wife, police, but it does call for, I think, about a half a cup of honey. Nutrients and enzymes. I should just make this video a blooper video.